God's children. We're certainly glad that you all have come out to once again praise and worship the Lord. For God is a good God. And God is worthy to be praised. Psalms 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endure to all generations. Again, we greet you in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for each of you, you all's presence. For those who are logging on live on Facebook, we thank God for your presence also. And we just pray that God will continue to smile upon each of us as we try to do the will of God to turn this dark and dying world towards your living Savior, Christ Jesus. For we know that God is our help, our refuge in a time of trouble. We can lean on God and depend on God for all that we stand in need of. Because God has never failed, nor will he ever fail. Because when God promises, God will do. And as we worship in spirit and in truth this morning, we just thank God and I'll ask you to pray with us and pray for us. For all that say pray for me. But we know at some points in our lives things get hard. Things become troublesome. But yet we know the God that we serve is bigger, better, and more able to move that trouble out of our way if we would trust in him. We would now ask uh, that we be laid in scripture uh, followed by a prayer. Deacon Brown is going to come and lead us in scripture and then we would have our own. morning prayer. Amen. Amen. And then we'll be led by Deacon Larry Montgomery. As we go now to do the blessed will of God. If you know someone stands in need of prayer, please feel not to call out their name. For God is a good God. And we're ready to be praised. Brother Brown, come forward.
Let us know you better in the way we talk, the way we pray, the way we fellowship, the way we just communicate with each other, the way we embrace each other, the way we reach out to those who are standing in the dark in this dark world. But a light comes to this world in the form of your son, Jesus Christ, and it shines on us, Lord. And we need to hold on to that light. We need to be led by that light. Because, Lord, when we lean to our own understanding, sometimes we go down some roads, and those roads have some signs on them have to call detours. And the detours are to lead us back to you, Lord. When we run into those dead ends, Lord, we need to learn to turn around and look for you to lead and guide us, Lord, in the right direction. Lord, you're a good God. You're an almighty, living, loving God. And how we need thee in everything we can think of and things we can't think of. Lord, we've gotten ourselves in a pretty much of a mess as a human race. But we know you can fix it. And only you can fix it. We hear what the doctors say. We hear what the politicians say. But you have the first and the last word in everything. So let us not be confused. Let us not get entangled up into this world in this that we have to hear on a daily basis. But let us search the scriptures to give us peace of mind. Let us have rest at night. Let us wake up, be fully energized to deal with the situations of the day. And Lord, most of all, let us follow the example of Jesus Christ. Because when we do that, Lord, we're on the right path. Right now, we pray for the sick and the shut in, the homeless, the downhearted, the depressed, those who are locked up in the jails and the prison. We pray for those in the mental institutions and those in the nursing homes. And we pray for those who are caretakers over all those who need to be cared for. We pray for the young people in our society, Lord. And we know, Lord, coming up in the weeks to come, a lot will be going back to school. And we have issues dealing with that right now, Lord. We, we're concerned about the health and well-being of our children. But we still know that they need to learn, but Lord, they need to learn in a safe environment. And we pray for you to provide that for us. But we have to have opening ears and hearts, Lord, to receive your word and not be stubborn and lean to our own understanding and doing what we want to do as a society. So I pray this day, Lord, that in some form and fashion, everyone that has breath in their body will draw closer to thee. These things we humbly ask for in Jesus Christ's name. And we also pray for our pastor who will bring us a word today. And how we need thee, Lord. How we need that word to feed us spiritually. So we can be strong. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 Oh, God, should have said amen one more amen. time. Amen. Excuse me, blame it to my head and not my heart, but I did um, fail to mention or want to mention that uh, Sister Carter called uh, Brother Jay on yesterday uh, and said that she lost her brother. In Chicago, so we want to keep uh, Sister Sheila Carter in our prayers. Amen. Amen. That God will uh, keep her in this time of trouble and in this bereavement. Amen. And that God will strengthen her. But we also uh, certainly want to welcome uh, our friend and Brother Taylor's son uh, as he has come to uh, visit his parents. We just thank God for your presence also. And all of those who have come to join with us uh, this day as we honor God, as we lean and depend on Him to direct our paths. How many agree God is always good? We do it all the time. Yes, He is. He's not good some of the time. He's good all the time. Even when you think He's not God is still a good God and worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. We're going to take it up in just a few minutes. And then as the praise team will uh, come and render a few selections. As you hear me say, we want to shake the ground and let the world know God be our praise in God. Amen. Amen.
Mae Turner used to sing it a long time ago. And how it just disown us this morning. So if y'all know it, just sing with us. It's a uh, Lord keep me day by day.
movement and beauty. Not made by hands. That building where God has made. That building where God rests. That building where God rules and that building where the people of God will always be in the presence of God. In order to reach that building, you got to be saved and born again. In order to reach that building, you have to go through one of those 12 gates. In order to reach that building, to walk down the streets paved with gold and have a diamond and a crown placed on your head, you must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You must take him as your personal savior. For God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, in order to see God face to face, we got to live right down here. In order to see God face to face, we got to have a relationship with God down here. In order to see God face to face, we got to be willing to put sin behind us and live for God. And let the power of the Holy Spirit lead, guide, and direct us. You see, God is not a half-stepping God. God doesn't do anything halfway. And God doesn't expect His children to do anything halfway. But either we're going to live for Him or we're going to live for ourselves. Either we're going to lift Him up or we're pulling down. And we know as God's children, we certainly want to lift up the name of God. For all in this dark and dying world to see that there is a reality in serving the truth and a living God. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, this morning we come just to say that. We come, O oh God, seeking your divine will for our lives. We come, God, this morning realizing that you are God and God all by yourself. We come realizing, God, that it is you that breathed into us the breath of life. It is you that has ordered our steps and direct our paths. It is you, O oh God, who supplies strength in a time of weakness. It is you, O oh God, that makes the rain to stop falling in our lives. It is you, O oh God, that allows grace and mercy to be given to an undeserving soul. God, in this morning, we're so thankful and so glad to call you God. We're so thankful to be able to call on your name in a time of trouble. God, we're thankful for the relationship that we have with you. We know, God, that we're not perfect. We know we sin and we come short of your glory. We know we fall, we stumble, but we get up. And we don't get up under our own strength, but we get up because you push us. And at certain times, God, you pick us up and you carry us on. And we're so thankful, God, for you are better to us than we've been to ourselves. God, and we just pray in this moment that we deliver your word, that you will speak to us and speak through us. Open up our hearts and our minds and pour out that spirit upon us. God, use us for your glory. That your people may be lifted. For those who do not know you, your son in the free pardon of their sin, may come saying, what must I do to be saved? God, be with all of those who say, pray for me. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We ask forgiveness of sin and shortcomings. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. And amen. Again, we greet each of you in the blessed name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And for all those who are alive on Facebook, we thank God again for your presence. This morning, our word will come from the first book of Corinthians, chapter number 2, verses 9 through 10. 1 Corinthians, chapter number 2, verses 9 through 10. Amen. Amen. We found that let us stand for the reading of 
God's word. Amen. Amen. Second, First Corinthians chapter number two, verses nine through ten read. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, nor either entered into the heart of man. The things which God had prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For ye, Spirit, searched all things, yea, the deep things of God. You may be seen. Now, focus scripture is mine. As I will read that again, but as as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor enter into the heart of man. What good thing God has in store for them that love him. This morning for a few minutes I would like to speak to us from the topic God sees your situation. God sees your situation. This morning as children of God, we certainly come to understand by trial and tribulation, by tests, by struggles in our lives, that the struggle is certainly real. This morning as we look at the world around us, we can truly say that the world is in a spiritual warfare. And as the children of God, we seek consolation and comfort in God our Savior. During this spiritual warfare, we seek the security that only God can give. When we find ourselves in spiritual darkness, contending with the evil of this world, we understand that we go up against things that we don't uh, desire in our lives. It is necessary for us to, at some point in our lives, fight against spiritual warfare because that is what makes us strong in God. None of us desire trouble to find its way into our lives, but without trouble, we wouldn't truly understand that God is on our side. Yeah. If we didn't have to fight sometimes, if we didn't have to struggle sometimes, if we didn't have to climb the rough side of the mountain, we didn't know that God will supply his strength in our weakness. In this dark and dying world, we find that men of light contend with darkness. In this spiritual warfare, we find that good is always clashing with evil. Right. Don't you know the closer we get to God, the more we can assure ourselves that trouble will come into our lives. Amen. You see, the sa Satan does not want us to get close to God. Amen. Satan doesn't want us to begin to trust in God. Satan doesn't want us to lean on the word of God because when God's people become empowered by God, when God's people understand that you fight something that you cannot see, you understand that God sees your situation. Satan does not want you to trust in God. Yeah. Too often times in our lives, the good in us has to fight the bad. We have that little angel sitting on one shoulder and the other angel sitting on the other shoulder. So many times when we want to do right, we seem to do wrong. So many times when we want to go straight, we take two steps backwards. So many times in our lives when we feel like we just made it over the hump, we see another speed bump in our lives. Right. Too many times in our lives we fight things that we truly do not understand. Yeah. You see, the prince of this world is using those who are in darkness to do his dirty work. He is devouring those who give themselves to him and allow them to worship him instead of worshiping God. You see, we have to understand today that as children of God, God will supply our every need. As children of God, we have to understand that God will be a fence all around us. As children of God, we must understand that we can stand on the promises of God, the word of God, and trust in what God says. 
Because somebody can understand that what you did on yesterday, it wasn't you that brought you through, it was God that fought for you. You see, God, even in our weakness, He sees our strength. When we feel like we can't go on, God understands and supplies our every needs. Just the other day I was reading a story just to let you know that sometimes we face things that we don't understand. The other day I was reading a story about a young lady who uh, wanted to understand that, uh, or tell the world that she understood that the black lives matter. And I have to tell you this morning that as a pastor and as a preacher, we have to understand or be careful not to alienate anyone else because of uh, the color of our skin. But we do understand that it's important to understand and to talk to us as a people of color. Just the other day as I read that story, this young lady in front of her house wrote in chalk that black lives matter. She wrote also other positive mess messages to let her neighborhood understand that black lives matter, but not only does black lives matter, that all lives matter. She wanted to encourage her neighbors that I see the pain and the hurt that you are going through. Not all of her neighbors were people of color, but some was white, some was Korean, some was from Asia, in just all places of the earth. But this young lady in her young mind understood that what you do for God is the only thing that lasts. She wrote these positive messages on her sidewalk only to come out in the morning and find out that the word black had been washed away. The word lives matter and her other positive messages remained on the ground. This young lady, though she was hurt and devastated, took her chalk one more time and wrote in the word, the word black. And her sentence was complete that black lives matter. She got up the next morning to find out that once again the word black had been washed away. She ran into her mom and she said, Mom, I just don't understand what is going on. Don't people understand that we don't mean or we don't trust just in ourselves, but we trust in the Almighty God. Don't people understand that what we're trying to understand is not that we're better than somebody else. Not that we deserve God's blessings more than somebody else. Not that we deserve what God has more than anybody else. But what I'm trying to tell the word is no matter the color of your skin, people matter to God. And in that situation, God sees your situation. The mom was hurt. She was devastated. And she decided to take uh, actions in her own hands. She took a video camera and she pasted it on uh, that, those words, Black Lives Matter. Right. And little to her dismay, she seen in the middle of the night a man carrying a bucket full of water. In that bucket, he watered and he would get to the word black and he would dump it on there and wash the word black out. He would go about his way and act as if nothing ever happened. The next morning, as the mother seen the video, she confronted the man, and the man began to tell her, I washed it away because it's not only black that matters, it's all lives that matter. The mom says, I understand what you're saying, and we all certainly agree that all lives matter to God. But what she was trying to get this young man to understand is, yes, all lives matter, but your counterparts are not the ones that are being killed in the street. Your counterparts are not the ones who are giving their lives through police brutality. Yeah. Your family is not the one that has to struggle from whips on their backs. Your family is not the ones that have to struggle to eat and survive. Your family is not the ones who have to contend and be called nothing. As her, she took the matters a little bit further. She posted on Facebook the story of what her daughter felt and what she was going through. To her dismay, all of her neighbors began to join around her house. All of her neighbors began to write messages of encouragement. And don't you know that that morning when they got up, every message that they had wrote when they came together remained on the ground. What I'm trying to get us to understand is, yes, all lives matter, but when we band together in the name of God, there's nothing that can stand against us. Yes, we can wash away a word, but when you have the word in your heart, when you have the word of God deep in your soul, nothing can wash it away. You see, it is in the word of God that we must find ourselves standing. Oftentimes when we trust in God, we understand the words of Psalms 46, where it says, God is our refuge, strength, and very help in a time of trouble. 
We have to understand that when we are low and when we are confused, when we don't understand and when we are scared, when we feel all alone and all by ourselves, God says, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear no evil. We don't have to fear evil because God is with us. You see, he says his staff and they rod and his rod, they will comfort us. You see, when those who understand that God sees them, no matter what you face in your life, you understand that God is more than all the world against you. Right. Psalms 119 says, I pray that your merciful kindness and comfort find its way into your servants' hearts. You see, as children of God, we must trust and depend on God. In our scriptures, we must understand some things that God needs each of us to know. When we see ourselves struggling, God says he sees you. When we see ourselves not able and not able to climb the rough side of the mountain, God says he sees you. You see, we must, as God's children, acknowledge that at some points in our lives, we're going to face danger. Sometimes we're going to face toils and snares. Sometimes death and trouble will stand in our way. Sometimes we have to climb up the rough side of the mountain. But just as we are reminded that God says we don't walk alone, we can be encouraged that God will be for us and he's moving in all the world against us. When I was thinking about the other day, my time that I was blessed to spend in the military, as I was blessed to stay in the United States Army, I began to reminisce on things that they taught us for survival. I began to remember that they taught us first aid. I remember that they began to teach us how to read a map and navigate through subterrains with a map and a compass. I began that they taught us how to use a weapon to defend ourselves and our fellow soldiers. I remember that the patch that we wore on our shoulder said, choose your prey. That is a French word that means or translated always ready. And I began to think of how that training prepared us to fight that which we did not know. You see, there is an enemy that stands in our way. And that enemy wants to push us down. That enemy wants to defeat us. But as I began to think of that training that they uh, put into my heart, skills like first aid and things about how to communicate through a radio, I began to turn that into a spiritual thing. And I began to understand that my weapon was the word of God. And that my way of communication was prayer. And that God never fails when we call on his money to go in holy name. I begin to remember the brotherhood that we have. And I begin to think that God is a God that sits closer than a brother. You see, the techniques that we learned in the military are the same techniques God teaches his children to survive. And when we survive, God says he supplies our need. Oftentimes, our lack of efforts is why God does not take notice of us. Too many of us are standing on the sideline instead of allowing God to use us. We see the trouble that stands in our lives and we allow that trouble to defeat us. We see that that trouble is not allowing us to move forward and we begin to move backward. But God says even though you're waddling in your pain, even though you misery in your misery, God says he sees your situation. You see, as we learn to lean on God, Paul declares in our text this morning that eyes have not seen nor ears heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the good things God has prepared for them that love him. I believe this morning if we truly want to be seen by God. I believe this morning if we truly want to stand out in the eyes of God. If we want to be used for the glory of God, we have to give God our best and allow God to do the rest. We must be willing to stand on the principles of God and let this dark and dying world know that, yes, we have been pushed down. Yes, trouble does find its way into our lives. Yes, we do get sick sometimes. Yes, we do get tired sometimes. But the God that we serve will supply our every need. You see, as children of God, and giving God our best in order for God to give us his best. We must become the soldiers of God that God wants us to be. In First Corinthians, excuse me, Romans chapter 12, it says, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, 
that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, that your, is your reasonable service. This morning, I will not pretend to each of us that life is not hard. I will not pretend that life will not knock you down. I will not pretend that life is not harsh in some situations. I will not pretend that everything will go your way. I will not pretend that you will always come out on top. I will not pretend that you will not, under, will not be dismayed and sometimes asking God why so much pain. Right. I won't pretend that this morning just because you pray about it, your situation is going to immediately turn around. Yes. But what I will tell you is if you don't give up, and if you don't give in, yeah. instead of complaining and welcoming your problem, if you be able to hold on and hold out, God's unchanging hand will see you through. Yeah. Sometimes we do have to stand the test of faith. We have to bear our burdens. We have to carry our crosses. And we must lay it all on the altar of sacrifice. Yeah. Sometimes we must walk through the storm in order to see the sunshine. Yeah. Sometimes in order to see a brighter day, we must have hell in our lives. Yeah. Sometimes in order to go with without, we must go and get. Sometimes we must go at things all alone. Right. Sometimes we must climb up the rough side of the mountain. Sometimes we have to have dirt thrown in our lives. Sometimes the road may get tough and the way may be hard. But if we struggle to find our footing, God will supply our needs. You see, the scripture says, who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress? Shall persecution or famine? Shall nakedness or peril or even sword? As it is written for your sake all the day long, we are like sheep accounted for the slaughter. Yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Paul said, I am persuaded that neither life nor death, nor angels, nor principalities or powers should be able to separate us from the love of God. Right. Nor things present, nor things to come. Nor height, nor death, nor things created should be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Yeah. There are people of God who struggle each and every day. There are people of God who face the rough side of the mountain each and every day. There are people of God who feel lonely, depressed, and withdrawn. There are people of God that struggle and face mood disorders. There are people of God that face anxieties each and every day of their lives. There are people of God who face personality disorders, not knowing who they are and whose they are. There are people who face psychotic and trauma that face in their lives. There are people who are struggling to get off substance abuse. Yes, God's people face a variety of struggles each and every day. Just because you are God's child does not make us immune to what is in the world. But I promise you this morning that if you stand on the word of God, if you allow God to come into your heart, if you allow the spirit of God to empower you, no matter what you face, no matter your disorder, no matter your anxiety, no matter your eating disorder, your psychotic disorder, your trauma, or your substance abuse, God will see you through. spiritual warfare that we fight on a daily basis beats us down. It's meant to destroy us. It's meant to make us weak, to get us tired, and give up. Satan, as the word says, go to and fro, seeking whom he might devour. The princes of darkness and the principalities stand in our way. Even those who trust in God have adversities and hardships. But I ask you this morning, when you feel like you can't go on, when you feel like trouble is in your way, when you feel like your situation is weighing you down, when you feel like you're spiritually bankrupt, spiritually depleted, and spiritually tired, you're struggling in your mess, and you want God to see you, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when you're waiting in misery, you're wobbling in your troubles, and everything you do is seems to go wrong? What are you going to do when you can all you can do is drink to hide your pain? You can do is all you can do is sleep to not face the realities of your life. What are you going to do when all you can do is run and hide instead of trusting in God? What are you going to do when your mood swings like a leaf in the wind? 
What are you going to do when your anxieties get the best of you? What are you going to do when you, be, you decide to not trust in God and abuse yourself to substance and pleasures of this world? What are you going to do when you sleep through your pain? What are you going to do when you praise? When you fast it? When you worry in the word of God and nothing seems to be changed? You feel like your problems have weighed you down. And God has closed his ears to your problems. What are you going to do when you can't release the pain in the hurt inside? What are you going to do when you feel like you can't go on? What are you going to do when you feel like somebody is scandalizing your name? What are you going to do when people talk about you? What are you going to do when God says, I need you, but you're too scared to get in the fight? What are you going to do when you can't claim nothing but defeat in your life? What are you going to do when you're pushed down and you understand that God is seeing your situation? You see, we, this morning we have to understand that God does care about us. God does care about the struggles that we face. Instead of claiming defeat in our lives, we must begin to claim victory. Instead of claiming defeat in our lives, we must stand on the word of God. Somebody needs to look at their labor and say, God is using me. God sees my situation. He knows that I'm broke, busted, and disgusted. He knows that my bills are piling up on the countertop. He knows that the cabinet in the ox box is running empty. He knows that I've been pushed down and talked about on my job. He knows when I go to school, them people say that I don't look like them. But no matter what situation we find ourselves in, we have to understand that God is a fence all around us. That God will turn it around in our favor. You see, when we don't worry about what's going on in our lives, we can trust and understand that God before us, he is more than all of the world against us. You see, this morning we can hear the words of Anthony Brown's new song. And I'm sure that you heard it, and when I hear it, I just get pumped up. That song being this week. Has anybody heard that song? He says, I cannot explain it. This may not make sense. I may not explain it. But what I'm going to, excuse me, I cannot explain it. This may not make sense. I'm looking for speaking something different. I'm claiming something different. Expecting something different. This week, I expect a miracle. He says, I cannot explain it. This may not make sense. And what we have to understand is what we go through, people may say it doesn't make sense. But as I said, if God be for you, he is more than all the world is against you. King David in Psalms 41 says, I was talking to God. I was trying my best to wait. He said, I waited and I waited. And then I had to wait some more. Patiently, I was waiting on God, knowing that God would come through for me. He says, I waited and I waited. I waited and then I waited some more. He says, and then finally God heard my prayer. Finally God heard my supplication. Finally God seen my situation. And you know what God did? But David said God bent over and began to speak to him. God began to show him his glory. God began to encourage David that he could go on just a little bit further. You see, Peter said in 1 Peter, he says, brief suffering in our lives brings the glory of God in our lives. All grace of those who will share the gospel will share in the eternal glory of our Christ Savior. When we personally and powerfully restore us, God will make us stronger than we've ever been before. You see, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, all I'm trying to tell us this morning is no matter what you're going through, God does seek you. No matter the struggle you face, no matter how many tears you've cried, no matter how far your head is bowed down and your bracket back is broken, God sees you. No matter the storms that find their way into your life, God sees you. If you need God to stand in for you, if you've been praying for a little while, if you've been trying to hold on for a long time, keep on holding on and keep on holding out. And God will direct your path. As the word says, eyes have not seen, 
nor in any has heard the great thing God has in store for them that love him. How many of y'all know God has a blessing with your name on it? How many of y'all know this morning that God sees your situation? How many of y'all want to claim the blessing that God has for you? You've been struggling too long. You've been fighting too long. You've been climbing up the rough side of the mountain too long. But God does have a blessing with your name on it. Today, somebody needs to claim that blessing because God sees each and every one of our uh, situations. In this dark and dying world, we may fight. We may struggle. We may get hurt. We may get pushed down. We may have to fight sometimes. Sometimes we may have to cry to keep from laugh to keep from crying. But when we do, God will see you. God sees everything. Because God is an all-knowing God. And because God is an all-knowing God, He doesn't have to see your today because He sees your tomorrow. You may be struggling today, but God can look out on the horizon and see the storm that you're facing in your life. And just on the other side of that storm, God presents a rainbow. You see, what we have to do is stand strong in our storms, even though it's raging all around us, even though we feel like we're in a wind tunnel, even though it is pushing us to and fro. God says, stand still and know that I am God. Because when we stand still and know that He is God, God says He sees us, and since God sees us, He will remove this cold, those dark clouds from our life. Though God sees us, He will move that trouble out of our lives. God is a bridge over troubled water. God is a doctor in a sick room, in a lawyer in a courtroom. God is the one who supplies our every need. God has been better to us than we've been to ourselves. God sees our struggles and God delivers us from our struggles. He's just asking, will we trust? Will we hold on and hold out? Will we wait until our change comes? Will we pray till we can't pray no more? Will we trust God till we can't trust Him no more? Will we lean on God's Word until the God's Word begins to speak to us and encourage us and tell us, yes, I see you. How many of y'all know God sees you wherever you are? That no matter what we face, no matter what we're going through, no matter what comes into our lives, God sees us. God sees us so much that way before he found, founded the world, way before he fashioned man, way before he breathed into man the breath of life, he knew he was going to send his son to be our savior. You see, you didn't know what you was going to go through, but God did. You didn't know the storms you were going to face, but God did. You didn't understand the pain you was going to have to carry, but God did. You didn't understand that you were going to get pushed down sometime, but God did. And because God knew that he sent his son who died on the cross of Calvary, who shed his blood for the remission of our sins, who through that blood washed away every sin and heartache and pain, who through that blood gave us strength to run on just a little while longer. He was buried, but he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And because he has all power of heaven and earth in his hand, God sees you and I. Somebody you've been carrying around that hurt too long. Somebody you've been carrying around that unforgiveness too long. Let it go. And let God. Put that pain, put that misery behind you. Forgive that person of what they did a long time ago. Because guess what? They forgot about it and they're going on back up this. And you're still walking around here. Hurt. Pushed down and then defeated. God says let it go. Because God sees you. And whatever, whatever you face, God says he'll be right there with you. We open the doors to the church. And if you're here and you're out of Christ, we ask you to come. God sees you. Just as you are. And as we so often say, it doesn't matter where you've been or what you've been through. God loves you too much to leave you the way you are. Will you come and give your life to Jesus? And give your heart to God. And allow God to be your all in all. Even if you just need prayer, come down to me.
Though sometimes we'll never be recognized for the deeds. Though some way one may never say thank you. God, let us stay in carriage. Because we know. And they that you will send Jesus back. We will hear our names called. And when we do, and we find ourselves in your presence each and every day, God, we're only going to continue to praise that we started there. For God, you are loving God. You're full of mercy and full of grace. And we just thank you for all that you do in our lives. God, world, we need your help. Please hear our prayer. For it's in Jesus' name that we do ask and pray. And every heart said together. Amen. 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 Yeah, go on and get by the hand. It's all right. The only time you rush God is when you don't want God to help you. Amen. But I think all of us want God to help us. Amen. He's not going to rush the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Again, we glad for each of you all's presence. Those of uh, you who have joined us on Facebook, we certainly glad for your presence. And we pray that you receive the blessing from the Word of God this morning. And as we go from this place, we just go and ask that you continue to pray for one another. That God will use us. That God will continue to bless us. And that God will continue to smile upon us. Amen. 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 Your brother Jay here. Uh, okay. Let us just say amen. 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 amen.